Un. Hey there, everybody. We decided to do a uh, part two because we didn't get to finish because the Zoom cut us off mm -hmm. of our rant here on Monday night with all the guys uh, about bands we used to not like when we were younger. And now we appreciate it really, really well. So or really much, I should say. So uh, just to reiterate where we left off in the first part. So Cinderella was my last pick uh, as a band that I really didn't care for back in the day. And I've grown to appreciate them later on not a bad band not a bad band pretty uh, bluesy pretty heavy in spots good gritty vocals great guitar playing but you look at them and you're like you think one thing and you actually listen to the music and you get another so that was my second choice steve back to you for your next one well this one i kind of winged uh it's a band i really liked uh at one time and i kind of brushed them off uh in the 80s uh i saw them on tour at the Meadowlands. One of my first concerts, one of my first ever stadium concert, it was Frank Marino and Mahogany Rush, uh, Ted Nugent and Aerosmith with a band called Journey opening up. And I really liked that album uh, with, you know, Wheel in the Sky and everything else. But, you know, like the next album after that came out, I liked it a little bit and I really grew away from them. And I was like, in the 80s, when I opened the store and got more into metal, I was like, ah, Journey. Yeah, chick rock, you know, it's like, ah, not that great. And, you know, yeah, that's good songs you hear in the radio, but it's not for me. And then I got to see them a few years ago and I kind of wrote them off for many, many years. I mean, I probably had Escape at one time. I don't even know if I owned the album. Never really listened to it, but the record store, we sold it, of course. But uh, I went to see them with a friend and we were going to Bethel Woods and a Steve Miller band. We were really going to see Steve Miller. And Journey was playing with Arnell, the new singer. And Journey floored me that night. They were just so great. And then I kind of went back and revisited. And my friend, good of one of our mutual friends, I know, uh, Scow knows, and maybe you guys know, Dave Markle, one of our Middletown Metalhead brothers, was like loving it. He was so excited to go see Journey and I keep, and then we, I was right after we were hanging out in the parking lot after and I'm like, dude, they kick ass. Then I got to see Journey a couple of years later and Pete, you went, you and I went, we went to Madison Square Garden. We had great seats. I think I had second row. You had like 10th row or something like that. Yeah. And it was Santana reunion with Journey headlining. And we looked at each other and said, how could Journey even be anything compared to that Santana set? And Journey, they were amazing. Great that night. <laughs> yeah, and I went great. back and I looked at some of that stuff, like Edge of the Blade, like talking about. Uh, Nick was talking earlier, like they play three songs on the radio, but some of those albums in the '80s had some pretty deep cuts that were good, you know. And uh, that was, I guess, that's my guilty pleasure of uh, admitting that I like some chick arena rock from the '80s with Journey. <laughs> of course, Neil Sean and. You know, Steve Perry and the whole, it's a well-oiled machine. Just don't need to hear Don't Stop Believing ever again. Just <laughs> take that one song, shoot it into the sun. And, but you uh, must, uh, but Ryan, you must have a soft spot for open arms because of, it's on the heavy metal soundtrack. It is on the heavy metal soundtrack, which is yeah, the best yeah. soundtrack ever. So, uh, I'll, I'll start, <laughs> right, start the stripes forever. <laughs> Edge of the Blade is a, such a good song. It's like the only song ever where Steve Perry's in a bad mood and he's getting payback for that girl that dumped him. <laughs> <laughs> or is cheating on him, right? That... Edge of the Blade is great. That's like my all-time favorite Journey song. It's so good. And a lot of people don't even know it because if you just <laughs> listen to like a radio fan, you would never hear anything like that. It's like a heavy driving song and Steve Perry's really scored and you know, he's really mad at his girl or his life was breaking up or his wife or whatever. And it's like, you know, I feel that you're holding the wrong edge of the blade. And you don't hear that aggression out of Steve Perry too much. <laughs> Look at Scouts laughing at me. You want me to sing Dark Tranquility in the next episode? That's okay, Steve. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Nick, Scott. what do you got? <laughs> Chris loves oh, it when I do uh, Dark Tranquility songs live. Oh, for sure. <laughs> Um. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Going to speak this at this point. I gotta follow that up. Yeah, I like some Journey songs. My my daughter really, when she was little, she liked the song Lights, and we used to listen to that together. And that's actually my favorite Journey song is Lights. But um, so my band that I'm picking. Um, when I was uh, in my 
I guess very early twenties and I was all into the, you know, getting into all this heavy black metal and all that stuff. Um, you know, when you were, whenever you were a metalhead, there's always people that would come up to you and try and like, you know, like try to like bro out with you and be like, Oh, you like metal. So, you know, and they would always be like the one band that they would always like throw at you. For me, it's Rob Zombie. Every well now, yeah. In the mid nineties though, it was Ramstein. And I remember when Ramstein, you know, I, I, I like, you know, do host. I mean, okay. You know, I like some industrial. Wow. Music. It, it was cool, you know, and yeah, but then it was everywhere. But then I, yeah, I didn't give them a second thought really. And um, every dude would come up to you, be like, Oh, you like Ramstein? Like, Oh God, you know? So that contributed to me being, you know, sick of them or whatever, or just not want to get into them. And then honestly, it was the album they put out last year. Their self-titled album. That, fu- that fucking thing is really good. And, uh, and I realized that um, Ramstein is actually a very high quality band. And I, I was supposed to see them. COVID destroyed that. And, you know, their live shows are of things of legend. Um, oh, they don't have general admission. They, they are amazing live. I yeah, will attest to that. You could pay extra money to have your eyebrows burned off. They have like it's a... Cool. It's worth it. So you don't need those anymore. Area, yeah. So um, Ramstein... Uh, yeah, they're they're really good, and you know they're like controversial. They they've they've stirred up a lot of. Um, they were declared in their own country that kids couldn't buy the albums, and you know in the late two th- in the two thousand nine ten, you know there wasn't a lot of that type of. Um, no matter how extreme bands are, it just didn't have the same effect where where bands got in trouble that that were that big, and it was cool to see Ramstein get in trouble with uh, the authorities and be truly rebellious. So. I think we they're are uh, all living in America. All that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're they're good. They're good. Yeah, one, one, one of the best black bands ever. You, you've seen them? You've, yeah, I've never I, seen them. I've seen them, I think, seven times. Yeah, they, um, are they, are, they, they don't come to the state much, but they are fucking massive. Uh, yeah. and the, the biggest one I, I ever saw, I went to uh, a festival in, in Holland, and I always say, like, you have no idea how big. Ramstein is in Europe. Oh. I, mean, I know you, you've been there, so you know how big they are. But I yeah. went to a show in um, in uh, in Europe, and it was like um, it was like Velvet Revolver, Audio Slave, Motorhead, Slayer. It was all <laughs> original Black Sabbath with Ozzy, and Ramstein headlined over them. Wow! I mean, Ozzy came out, and he's like. We haven't been an opening band since 1972, man. Who is Ramstein? Um, but it was it was crazy because they are you know they're such a fucking massive band, but un- unbelievable live band. I had of course tickets to see them this year as well, and yeah, that's, that didn't happen. So yeah. maybe everything next year. I doubt everything it. everything I is on fire. Crazy. Yeah. 2025. Yeah. I mean, I I remember I took a friend of mine, Big Rich, and uh. He saw the show and I turned him and I go, what'd you think? He looked at me and goes, I didn't know one fucking song. That was the greatest concert I ever saw in my life. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they shoot a giant penis at the crowd, don't they? I mean, they oh, sold out oh, Madison Square oh, Garden like uh, six, seven years ago in like minutes. Yeah. I, yeah. I, I had to buy tickets off eBay. I'll never yeah. forget when I went to the show, like everybody around me, like everybody in Madison Square Garden we're speaking foreign languages. It was, it was crazy. Yeah. It was like people came from, from all over, but they sold out the garden in like a minute. It's almost yeah, like you know, were shopping at Woodbury Common. When you think about like what bands are going to take the to torch, Iowa. like what bands are going to take the torch from, you know, the Iron Maidens and Black Sabbaths of the world and a couple right. of those guys finally hang it up. Like what arena sized heavy, heavy band. band is going to take that torch. That'll and, be one of them. And they're, they're yeah, not a new one either. Few. One of the few. Wow. Yeah, that was great. That's a good point. There's, not, there's really not many that fill yeah. that void. But what do you got? You got Tool. You got them. You got it's over. Yeah. Five Figure Death Punch. Uh, yep. No. Slipknot. Slipknot. All the band Scout follows. Yeah. It's a lot of <laughs> Ghost. Yeah. All those bands that start with yeah, Ghost. Ghost. Uh, Ghost will do it. No, and, uh, uh, you know, if, if Amon and Marth were younger, I'd, I'd say maybe they got a little more traction, but those guys are getting fucking old, so... And maybe they got another 10, 15 years. Maybe, maybe they could do it. Because they are getting up there. Yeah. yeah their they, first album's like, uh, 
95 too or early 90s. Yeah, yeah they're around. probably like similar age of uh, Rome Stunning. But yeah. Lindemann, like those guys are in good shape. They keep themselves oh, very it's ridiculous. Yeah. Ridiculous yep. shape. Yeah. All right, Ryan, back to you. All right. So uh, <laughs> I pulled this off the shelf real quick. So this is actually probably the first band I remember hearing when I was young. And uh, my mom would play this band a lot. And I, I liked the songs back then, and I totally ignored them for decades. And then a couple of years ago, probably like 10 years ago, I just went, you know, like, you know what? I'm going to go buy one of their albums. And uh, you know what? The songs, they came back to me like that. That's how catchy and perfect, like little, I mean, they're not a pop band, but a rock band, but uh, for how like well-written they are. And that band is fucking police oh yeah uh yeah I, I bought all their albums and i'm like man it's like hearing this it's like no time had gone by at all you know from songs i hadn't really listened to because you know obviously a lot of stuff's on the radio but a lot of deeper tracks i really hadn't listened to and like since i was a little kid and it's like all the words like, i just came back immediately i'm like man these guys are phenomenal songwriters like this is really good stuff like they work so yeah, yeah. well minimalism like the, the songs aren't busy the, the arrangements aren't complex you know it's pretty simple stuff some of them, especially like uh, uh, like uh, "Spirits of the Material World," was one of the first songs I really remember hearing. And I heard it again. I'm like, that gets some radio play, but uh, I mean, actually, most a lot of their songs did. But uh, yeah, I and I started listening to them again. I'm like, this is this stuff is fucking fantastic. And uh, you know, ever since I've been like, you know, just right back in there. Kind of wish I had made that decision sooner to go back and kind of like reacquaint myself with that. But uh, no, I'm glad I did. And uh, I haven't regretted that decision one bit, you know. Well, well, definitely, yeah, I'm not gonna a lot of albums either, so it's not. No, it's only like what five albums, five or six <laughs> albums, I believe. Yeah, yeah. I this think I had the first three albums. I mean, they were huge when they came out. Yeah. Oh yeah, no, they were. They really start with like Roxanne, of course, you know the radio staples, but yeah, yeah. goes uh, Material World's a great song. Mm -hmm. No, they yeah. uh, they uh, definitely had a million big radio hits, but you know they had a lot of deeper cuts too. And, and they uh, got, I mean, they got huge. Oh, yeah. And, you know, justifiably so, because that's that's really, really good rock. You know, yeah. really well written. It sticks with you. You know, it's very memorable. Choruses, you know, yeah. obviously, you know, fantastic musicianship for like within the, like that kind of minimalist like framework. Good stuff. Yeah. And a death metal band from Sweden called Edge of Sanity covered Invisible Sun. And it's an excellent cover. And it's cool that a band that extreme also felt that the police you know were so amazing i think the police kind of appeal to just about anybody any kind of music listener regardless of what you like and, and i'll say too that um i don't always like gravitate towards the singles from any band but the police yeah. almost every single single, Some, every single it is the best single, stuff. that they are are amazing right they were they were a hit for a reason they were played on the radio yeah. for a reason and that their singles are absolutely fantastic absolutely i agree with that 100 percent no of probably almost all bands i can think of like maybe maybe them in fleetwood mac i would say that about you know like the singles are probably the best material but yeah mm -hmm. i think the police absolutely that's true yeah the king of pain king great song great king. great great fucking song awesome song really good wrapped around your finger awesome fucking song oh, wrapped around your finger is awesome walking on the moon Great, awesome! All these songs we, we can just name them all, right? <laughs> you can just, you can just make a list and go through them, and like, yep, that's my funny. police story. Was years ago, I had to go get a wisdom tooth out. It was like a 1995, and I was a nervous wreck. And I went to this dentist to find a fairgrounds, actually. And uh, the dentist was in there, and I went to sleep for it. And my wife goes, "Did you hear the music in there? He was blasting the police. <laughs> they were like literally blasting the police while they were pulling my tooth that day." That's cool. They were playing it loud because they didn't want to hear Steve screaming from the other room as the <laughs> Then I woke up, you know, from the gas and everything, and I was really feeling good. I'm like, oh shit, it's over. I'm like, cool. And I'm like, I this is, this is the most wasted I've been since I this used to be a rock club. Was, that used to be Rock Three. That was Rock Three's park, park, you know, Rock Three's building where they put the dentist in the office the medical complex. And they got a big kick out of it. So. All right, Chris, what do you got? All right, uh, this one's a little embarrassing, but I'm, I'm going with it. So, um, you know, in the, in the 80s, I just, uh, I had a bunch of Saxon records. I had like Denim and Leather and Crusader and a bunch of others. And I, I listened to them a couple times, but I just, I just never got into it. 
you know, they were always uh, on the road and they kind of stopped in America for a bit. But I remember they would come to the States every so often. They would play the chance and they'd be like, oh, I should go check them out. And I just never went. So it's not that I hated them. I just really didn't follow them. I really didn't listen to them. And then in, uh, in 2001, I flew by myself to the to Germany to go to the Wacken Open Air. And uh, I was really psyched to see Sodom. And I wanted to see Saxon, too. But I had to get to the like the front of the stage because Saxon was coming on before Sodom. And Saxon was playing with the, um, the Eagle. They brought the Eagle stage set up. And I was completely and utterly blown away. I was like, oh, my God, this is the fucking greatest band on, uh, in the world. W- what have I been doing the last 20 years? Like, my life is a lie. Like, They're a great live band. They're a really good live band. I was like, um, unbelievable, completely blown away. I went to the metal tent the next day and I bought every Saxon CD I could find. <laughs> I've seen them uh, 25 times since then. And they're, I think they're, they're one of the greatest live bands uh, there are. And, and uh, that's it. That's my pick for Saxon. Power and glory. Beth, Beth is a unbelievable, unbelievable band. Uh, you, know, I, you know, that's one of those things like, oh, I should go back and if there's a time machine. I go back and tell. 15 year old me like like listen to that denim and leather record like a thousand times and go see them on the next tour like even when they came out with well i mean they toured with wasp in 86 and it was like wasp and saxon or wasp and slayer so i went to see wasp and slayer um which i guess was the right choice but i'm like yeah. oh man uh, go back and that was the right go choice <laughs> I, I saw saxon at the chance on the crusader tour wow yeah yeah I saw, I had the poster still here in the house somewhere. That's all. I remember ripping the poster off the wall. I got oh yeah, like I got that poster. Nice, Chris. I'm kind of shocked that you weren't into Saxon back in the evening, knowing how big yeah, a I mean, you are. It makes no sense. Like when I look back, it's just I'm like, what, it happens. What was wrong with me? I mean, I loved Maiden. I loved Priest. I'm like, what the fuck? And you know, and that's always my my, my go to bands. Like a, a couple years ago, God, like ten years ago. The Misses and I did the first heavy metal cruise, and Saxon was one of the headliners. So we had to see them. You know, one night they did uh, Wheels of Steel, the whole record, and the other night I think it was uh, Denim and Leather, the whole record. And, uh, you know, I dragged the Misses with me both nights, and she didn't like them either night. And I'm like, what's wrong with you? I'm like, you like Maiden and you like Priest? Like, what's the matter with you? But I, so I don't know. Like, I don't know. I just, I think I just didn't pay attention to them. Like I said, I had the records. A couple of them. I don't even know how I got them. Maybe I traded them with somebody or something. I don't know. But I, I just really never got into them until I saw them live. And, and like I said, I was like, my life is a lie. I was like, this is, you know, <laughs> and I was like, this is terrible. You had so, me fooled. I was like, you know, I thought you'd been like a lifelong fan. Yeah, I would have. I would have. I would have. I would have. I them all along. It's only the last 20 years. You know, but uh, I've been trying to make up for lost time. That's all. That's all you can do. Hey, hey, they got a lot of albums, so uh, I'm sure they yeah, keep busy, they right? Shit, yeah, they do. Yeah, they <laughs> do. They had wheels of all about them. Them. That's a great fucking album. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All right. So my pick, I kind of gave it away in, in part one here, but uh, the Grateful Dead are also a pick of mine. So, you know, back in the late 70s, early 80s, I mean, I wasn't interested in that kind of stuff at all. I was like, ah this kind of hippie, hippie music, you know, I don't know, I don't know, know anything about it, don't really care for it. I went away to college in 84 at SUNY New Paltz. And of course I lived in a suite with a whole bunch of deadheads and me, and I stuck out like a sore thumb. So here I am, I'm playing my Sabbath records, Judas Priest, Metallica, Slayer, Deep Purple, Lingve, Malmsteen, all this stuff. And they're like, oh yeah, we don't like that stuff. Listen to this. And they would put on the dead and I'd be like, oh my god what is this like just rambling like boring ass music that doesn't go anywhere all this hippie drippy stuff and they're all like singing and dancing and i'm like and i'm like i just don't get it just don't get it and you know after a couple of years you know little by little i would start to all right that was kind of a cool guitar solo there yeah that's kind of trippy all right you know whatever but it probably wasn't until like maybe the mid late 90s where i started to say ah you know what this stuff isn't that bad because uh, I started to get really into progressive rock and I was like, all right, so, you know, I like the long sprawling jams. I know, Chris, you love that kind of stuff, right? 
<laughs> and finally, I, you know, kind of like Steve, it's like, you know what, you listen, there's certain times and situations where you can listen to the dead and it kind of takes you away from everything. I love listening to him in the summertime, you know, out by the pool, yes, where it's nice. Yes. And it's just, it's relaxing. It's fun. Sometimes if you're in the right frame of mind, you know, the music can kind of take you on a journey, so to speak. Uh, you know, they're kind of they're psychedelic. There's bits of blues, a little bits of jazz, a little bits of prog. There's a little bit of kind of country shit going on, jug band stuff. It's like a little oh, bit of everything. One. And everything. I can appreciate the musicianship and the songwriting. And there's just, there's so many great songs. So it took me a long time, but I can finally say I am actually a fan of the Grateful Dead. I don't know if I'd go out and call myself a deadhead by any means, but I still... The thing I, is, with people that are deadheads, they are very... I mean, I, there's a lot of them that don't listen to anything but the dead. Well, and yeah, that's what you had. You, know, had, what, you, had, you, had, you were kind of reflecting on, and like, they'll go, oh, yeah, cool, you got a Black Sabbath shirt. Oh, yeah, look, I had one of their albums once. Or something. Well, you, you, see that, you see that too, Steve. You know, I'm sure you see it a lot with, like, guys that are really into Kiss. Don't listen to anything but Kiss. Yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah, Kiss. Oh, or, yeah. You know, Rush as well. There's a there's a like a ton of Rush fans who they're just just Rush and that's it. I mean, the Grateful mm -hmm. Dead. I think is the biggest group of that. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. Kiss could be a Kiss could be a, a a second place in what you're just talking about, where they wear all the shirts. I mean, Iron Maiden also could be like that, but I think their fans listen to everything else. But go yeah. on the shows, like everybody's got a Maiden shirt. But Kiss, yeah, those guys that are just Kiss heads. That's yeah. it. And, and I mean, I don't know. Yeah. And all the solo side projects, and but that's yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. And yeah, it's, it's amazing. Cool. Like, you talk to, like, deadheads, and you talk about, like, uh, they're like, oh, yeah, the studio albums are not really good. They're a live band. You're like, oh, yeah, I got a couple of their live albums. They're like, oh, those live albums are no good. You need to go listen to the June 7th, 1973 oh, show. Oh, my God, that's Funny. so many. I mean, they know, like, every single... Yeah, show wow. that they've ever played i mean they're like that like you know, is a fine line yes yeah you know and you, you found that when you walk into that jam band area uh, that jam band scene like the allman brothers they would always sell like if you went to a show you could buy that show and you they would have it sent to you yeah like they record each show and i remember going to some of the final allman brothers shows and uh yeah i've got one more band that i can throw in if you want and when you if we still have time yeah we got time so you guys you guys got a couple more all right steve go I got another one. all right yeah. well i'm gonna stick with the jam band stuff uh banker government mule i never listened to them i didn't i want i saw i got caught them once of the show thought they were okay but i was kind of bored with it. and as i think just like the dead uh, a friend of mine kind of got me into them and now I mean, I love Government Mule, especially some of their live albums, like the one where they cover Floyd. And there's another one where they cover the Stones. Like, they're another band that has some really great live stuff. And uh, Warren Haynes and uh, Government Mule is one of the ones I really overlooked. I mean, they've been around. They're not new. They've been around since the late 90s. And I, I remember seeing, I think they played the Fairgrounds once years ago, and I had zero interest. And I was on the Fairgrounds that night, and I probably didn't even watch them. And I caught them at like a peach fest because I was going to see the almonds. And I'm like, yeah, they're okay. And then I really got into you know, like playing them a lot in the store. So Government Mules. Uh, well, I, I love like Government Mule. And they're such a great live band. Yeah. And they, they do the best covers ever. Their cover songs are so good. Yeah. Yeah. The War, War Pigs. And uh, uh, I think I see them do Gold Dust Woman. Oh, uh, yeah. They do Gold Dust awesome. Woman. Yeah. 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 Like they had like the dub side of the mule, the stone side of the mule. They got all these different, uh, you know, dark side of the mule. Uh, I remember hanging out at my ha at my house with a bunch of people. We did our, one of our little jams at my store, and everybody came over here, and they were like, all these uh, hippie guys were hanging around me. They're like, oh my god, you got that album? Put it on now! And everybody was smoking up. My head. <laughs> the mule. They were all happy. There you go. Good band. All right, I was Nick, mixing like one. when I was doing those little shows in my store. I was mixing like hippies with metalheads and hardcore kids, was, and everyone was having a good time. I, I always wish I had a, I had a good time with those. Yep, yep. Morpheus descends, and then having like Alex Cates play with a. I remember that Morpheus car and had a, a cool Morpheus underground thing. funk that was like a bluesy funk band doing some covers from upstate. It was all a good time. 
Cool. All right, Nick. What do you got? So, so um, you know, uh, when I was younger, I, uh, I I saw a movie. I'm gonna show you how I figured this out. Yeah, I saw this movie, this like sleazy movie, and there was a crazy chick in it, and she was playing like a a, a, a woman's prison like gang leader, and um, come to find out that who is this interesting, wild, punky chick, and her wow. name was Wendy O. Williams. Oh my God, a, a legend. Yeah, yeah and, one of the best. And then ever. when I got older, I got into you know getting into Motorhead and realizing that um you know that Lemmy had had, had some interaction with this woman and and, try, and tried to help her um you know advance her career a little bit and you know the plasmatics here we are so that's when Great you stuff. yeah I and this was from, tour. did you yeah this is from like you know so long ago that for that her to dress like just... that she was she was definitely a you know she was blowing up cars and smashing oh, things with chainsaws and, and explosions and getting in trouble constantly and you know I think she she just was so extreme and she was a very troubled you know person because she took her own life in 1998 yeah. Yeah. Uh, but the music is really good it's like I thought I thought they were only punk but there was like a definite metal thing oh, going well, on. yeah well, I, they I very, they, like they went with metal well, they were, were punk and then they put out metal priestess yeah they really album. crossed into metal I saw them at the chance it was one of the best concerts I ever saw I wow. bet I, that's so lucky I wish I could have you know been old enough to to experience that but um you know the fact that I'm I, as again as an older person I'm like I'm like the idea that she took her own life it has a different meaning when you're older you know when you're young you might be like ah but you know you realize how heavy and hard life is for for certain people especially artists and I think she yeah. was just so important and I love like really extravagant female performers. I mean, she, you know, not to compare her to Lady Gaga, but you know, um, it's very hard to be extreme now. In those days, Wendy wanted to drive a bus off of a thing, a bunch of TVs, and exploded. She yeah. got arrested for you know attacking cops and stuff. Like she, she just you know that 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 woman, she that was life. That was rebellion. That was. Um, and it really has an effect on me now. So I've discovered their music much more recently, and I'm like, wow, yeah. incredible. Wendy Will Williams. Car what? Will Carroll was at my store once, and he got a Wendy o. Williams plasmatic shirt, and he still talks to me when I talk to him. Uh, I, yeah. That's what he remembers from the store buying a Death album and a Wendy o. Williams. Yeah. Yeah. A plasmatic scooby top shirt. Yeah. And so she, thanks. She was just amazing. That band was so good. Yeah. Oh, Coup d'etat yeah. is one of the best records of all time. Beyond the Valley of 1984. Uh, yes. Yeah. Just so, so um, good, man. So good. Yeah. And Chris, I'll tell and you, then, Chris, Chris is a wrestling guy like I was, and uh, I am. And uh, Luna Vachon, totally, yes. totally like, could have been her sister. Oh, totally. Yeah. Like, had the whole, like, that weird, like, that attitude and brassness. Yeah. And, uh, we always said, like, oh, Luna's kind of like uh, I once uh, interviewed got this Wendy horrible back cover. Uh, I don't, they're not a cover band, but the Butcher Babies say they got their whole thing from Wendy Williams, and I don't see it at all. Yeah. Because the she, name, she used to spit out little plastic babies when you went to a show. My friend went with me, and he goes, I can't believe this. She was spitting out these plastic babies, and look what I caught. And that was Butcher Babies. <laughs> it was a song that she did. Yeah, yeah. Too funny. I, I once interviewed her in the 80s and she had wow. one, one stipulation. She said, we have to conduct the interview with you on my shoulders and us walking around the room. You did that? <laughs> she, 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 like, she was like four foot nine, right? I mean, and here I was, you know, pretty big at the time. And here I was, she hoisted me up on her shoulders and she's walking around the room. I got the mic underneath and I did the whole interview with her like that. Wow. Yeah. That's you, fucking wild. You, you That's told so me that cool. story on a show earlier this year. Is that the one we had? Will it was one of the one of the bands that came in my store. I think it was Will Carroll was talking about it. Yeah, it I might remember. Have been, yeah. You told us that story. I think Slagle might have been on. Yeah, it might have wow. been. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> so cool. All right, we got three minutes left. So Ryan and Chris, squeeze uh, right. squeeze one more. Oh, shut up. Real fast here. Real fast. So this is a great 70s guitarist. Uh, I never listened to him for years for no fucking good reason at all. Even though I like Frank Marino, I like Pat Travers, I like all those guys for years and years. But for whatever fucking reason, probably the most famous one. Uh, I don't know. I just I never listened nice. to Ted Nugent. Just never, I uh, never got around to him. I actually bought this album a couple of years ago, Double Odd Gonzo. And I'm like, this is fucking amazing. Why did I miss out on this? 
for years. And so I've since rectified that. Uh, I don't give a fuck. I know it's politics or for some people. I don't give a fuck about that. But, uh, you know, this, this is an awesome, awesome, awesome mandatory live album. Gone back, got all the other stuff. So glad I did. And uh, yep, that's my pick real quick. Good choice. Awesome. All right, Chris. All right, real quick. Uh, I was dating this girl in like uh, 89. And she's like, hey, this band uh, ministry that I used to like, they're like a synth band, came out with a new record. And uh, I had credits for like Record Town. So I gave her to her. She bought the CD. And she's like, this album sucks. I don't know what happened to this band. And I'm like, yeah, that's cool. Whatever. Just wasted my fucking credits at Record Town. Thank you. I could have bought like a Maiden record or something. So like a month later, like four or five months later, I'm watching MTV News with Kurt Loder. And they do a, a video thing on this band ministry. And they're like it, it fucking slamming guitars, two drummers. They're playing behind a chain link fence. They have, you know, garbage cans on fire on stage. Like, this is fucking amazing. I'm like, hey, wait, ministry. What's that? That CD? Give me the CD. And it was a minus a terrible thing to taste. And I was blown away. And I, I've been a huge fan ever since. It's my favorite ministry album right there. Yeah, that's that's my favorite. Favorite best album. And Psalm 69 are got to be the best. Yep. Definitely. Very cool. Well, we got through this. So uh, my last pick is actually the Beatles. And uh, when I was a kid, didn't like the Beatles. My father was a big fan. I was like, eh, not really into it. I Give me those Kiss records any day. Well, mm -hmm. I finally, probably in the early, late 80s, early 90s, I discovered the love for the Beatles that has continued to this day. So, uh, you know, better late than never, right? So visit us on right the web, guys, at uh, www.seatranquilly.org. We're on Facebook, we're on Twitter. Of course, we're here on YouTube all the damn time and every Monday night. So for Steve Keeler, Ryan Scow, Nick Franco, Chris Alloway, and Pete Parter, we'll see you guys next Monday. Thanks for sticking with us for this two-parter and uh we'll see you next week take care rock on